so hello everyone so in last class we have discussed the different modules of uh, Kawabata evaluation system for fabrics KESF so module 1 which actually measures the uh, tensile and shear related characteristics module 2 it's a uh, bending related characteristics module 3 it is a uh, compressional related characteristics and module 4 surface friction and uh, roughness related characteristics and also we have mentioned that ultimately we get a large number of different types of uh, parameters around 16 uh, parameters we get and now what do you do with this parameter so actually kawabata system it provides uh, one uh, mechanism to get ultimately overall uh, fabric handle value using all these parameters. Now, this, uh, um, uh, this is uh, the equation which we have mentioned that uh, y is a parameters which we uh, try to get uh, the handle related aspects or tactile uh, which affects the tactile sensations and uh, C0 is a coefficient of the equation and C 1 is a C i is a contribution ratio of a particular parameter which is used. So, x i are uh, uh, denotes the different parameters uh, like uh, tensile related parameters, shear related parameters. So, uh, these are the parameter individual parameters and m is the mean of this uh, parameter x i and this is the devi standard deviation of x i. Okay. So, using this and all the parameters may not be significant for a particular handle response the tactile response. Okay. So, these parameters are uh, their uh, equations and their weightage is uh, different okay. contribution ratio is different for a particular. Now, let us see an example of uh, this is mechanical. Now, we let us see example of three parameters okay. the Cauchy, Sinaya, Kasha and Shari. Okay. Cauchy as we have, we have seen earlier it is a it uh, reflects the stiffness related characteristics. Sinaya, Kasha is flexibility with softness related characteristics and Shari, Shari is a crispness. Okay. So, contribution ratio of mechanical parameters C to Cauchy, Sinia, Yakasha and Shari using this earlier equation which is we have uh, that can you can, you can always immediately get like Cauchy what is Cauchy? Cauchy means it is a stiffness characteristics. So, here it has been observed that four parameters the four parameters are important parameters which are significantly affect. Okay. Now, here we can see the parameters with the positive sign and negative sign. Positive sign means it is a actually it is increasing direction if it increases this will increase that here if we see for measuring Cauchy which is it is it is not the exactly stiffness in last talk we have discussed last class we have discussed it is not exactly stiffness it is related to the stiffness and uh, Cauchy its contribution is 37 percent maximum contribution that to it is in positive direction that means what is Cauchy, Cauchy uh, B B is the bending rigidity bending rigidity which is measured in the KESF 2 system. KSF 2 system measures the bending rigidity and it is directly related with the Cauchy value. That means, if we get higher bending rigidity, so we will get higher Cauchy value. And if we see it is a 2 Hg, what is 2 Hg? It is a shearing hysteresis. Shearing hysteresis it is a it is a negatively correlated. What is this? this means higher shearing hysteresis gives lower Cauchy value 
that means it is not the stiffness it does not talk about the stiffness it talk about the stiffer fab higher bending rigidity with the lower stiffness that is the type of uh, thing it is telling. So, 2 H B so 2 H B is a it is a bending hysteresis. So, bending rigidity is there positive way, but bending rigidity bending hysteresis should be in the negative side 12 percent contribution, but that means higher bending hysteresis will give us lower Cauchy value okay. and W T it is a tensile energy. So, tensile energy also higher tensile energy will give us lower Cauchy value. So, this way this the uh, this concept of uh, Cauchy it is not exact it is not that straightforward it is an overall uh, concept. So, it it is uh, related with other parameters also there are say these are the parameters it is a uh, W T it is a tensile energy it is a uh, then uh, bending energy bending hysteresis it is a shear stiffness shear hysteresis compressional resilience mean deviation of mu mmd and smd geometrical roughness so all these parameters are related here with this let us see the sinai akasha what is this it is a flexibility with soft filling flexibility with soft filling if we see it is a maximum contribution is a bending rigidity maximum contribution of bending rigidity here, but it is a opposite. So, here it is talking about the flexibility uh, Cauchy was talking about the stiffness. So, minus b minus 44 percent means if we increase the b value we will get lower Sinaya Kasha. So, it it, requ it requires that means, soft lower B value will give us the higher scenario case, although the contribution is very high. So, it is directly correlated, it is inversely correlated with this okay. and scenario case, it is a soft feeling, flexibility with soft feeling. If what does it mean? It is a C, it is a it is a MMD, it is a mean deviation of mu, it is a higher mean deviation of mu it will give us lower value of Sinai Akasha. Its contribution is 10 percent g shear stiffness shear stiffness it is a higher shift stiffness will give us lower Sinai Akasha. 2 H B 2 H B it is a basically it is a bending hysteresis. So, higher bending hysteresis will give us lower value. So, we can see this Sinai Akasha from this uh, from this contribution value we can get idea about what does it mean. It is a total at once one feeling one uh, type of feeling and uh, Shari it is uh, it is called uh, crispness it is crispness of the fabric where G the shear stiffness it is uh, related with that contribution is 32 percent one third contribution is of g value shear stiffness, but higher shear stiffness will give us lower shari value lower crispness. So, if we want to have crisp higher shari it will we need to have lower g value. So, it is a another contribution which is positive in nature it is a MMD mean deviation of mu that means, the deviation of mu at the different point it, it gives a crispness that means, uh, somewhere it is a slipping sometime. So, we can see that uh, that uh, this type of feeling in a silk crispness so, crisp crispy feeling. So, it, it slips a stick slipping type of. So, mean deviation of mu it is a it is a good indication of the of uh, the sari and uh, SMD its contribution is that 8 percent. What is SMD? It is a geometrical roughness. So, geometrical roughness is also. So, if the geometrical roughness is high 
it will give us the crispness little bit. So, maximum contribution is the shear stiffness. So, lower shear stiffness will give us higher shari value and uh, that higher MMD will give us the higher shari value. That means, if we see if we take the uh, if we say eliminate SMD and RC compression and resilience their contribution. If we take talk about only these two contrib major contribution, we can see that it is a fabric should be should shear easily. It should shear easily, but the difference in mu should be high, the MMD should be high. Okay. So, higher MMD with lower G value. So, this way we can get the, uh, the concept of the uh, that this contribution and their tactile sensation. Okay. Now, we will uh, start the another set of instruments which is uh, fast instruments and this fast instrument developed by CSIRO Australia. Okay. So, this is uh, and it is a primarily it is actually it is a quality control and quality assurance purpose, but indirectly we can use this for uh, measuring the fabric uh, tactile responses. So, object it gives the indication of the fabric handle. The instruments are very simple, but the, the analysis of this from this uh, data it is very nice. Okay. So, we will uh, we'll see that with a uh, very simple measurement we can get wide range of data, wide range of, range of information. So, this uh, total fast system it, uh, it consists of three test parameters, test instrument, okay. three instruments are called. One is compression meter, it is a simple compression tester and it is not like uh, Kawabata, Kawabata system. KSF system gives uh, uh, total curve, it is it is a very complex, it is a very complex system, it gives the total uh, loading direction and unloading direction, it takes the total data, but here in a fast system it is it does not give any continuous measurement. In, in Kawabata uh, both loading and unloading direction we get continuous data, continuous curve, fast system we do not get any continuous curve, it is a discrete data, very discrete data, it is a uh, one or two data it gives from there only beauty of this system is uh, we get uh, uh, we can analyze if we analyze properly we will get large number very nice information. So, it has got first has got uh, three instruments. So, uh, first one is a compression meter, first two gives the uh, it is a bend it is bending meter and uh, first three it is extension meter. Okay. So, here all in all these three we do not get any curve and this all these things uh, all these three instrument it works in unidirectional one direction in only in the loading direction. We do not get in the anything any information during the unloading direction okay. and fourth one is it is not an instrument it is a test method. What is the test method? First four is the dimensional stability. Okay, test which are inexpensive. It's a very, it's a this first four we can we don't need any instrument. We can actually develop one system of measurement, and uh, and these instruments are it's not that complex. These are robust in uh, construction and uh, but this all this uh, three four modules can be can be interlinked in a, uh, the the computer it's a, it its output can be interlinked and ultimately we can get the uh, information okay now let us see first one working principle of first one it's a compression meter it measures simply it measures the fabric thickness and nothing else 
but let us see how do we get large uh, information okay very nice information okay. the fabric thickness it's a it's a thickness gauge it's nothing but a thickness gauge so fabric thickness t is measured at a pressure of 2 gram force per square meter and 100 gram force per square meter this that's all at two different thickness pressure we measure the fabric thickness and from there we get the idea of surface hairiness which is the term it is a surface thickness surface thickness it is the it is a difference in thick fabric thickness at 2 gram force per centimeter square pressure and 100 gram force per centimeter square. So, within this 2 gram uh, 2 pressure if the fabric thickness changes then the difference is known as the surface thickness that means this surface thickness gives an idea about the surface hairiness suppose the uh, fabric doesn't have any hair a fabric made of say monofilament yarn or uh, uh, yarn uh, fabric is singed there is no hairiness so the difference between 2 gram force per square centimeter it's a, and even 100 gram force per square centimeter it's a very low pressure so this in this two difference will be very low but if the fabric surface contains large number of hairs so that hairs will first get compressed at lower pressure so that the difference will be high that actually is in indi indicated by st so only by measuring the thickness we get idea about the the presence of surface hairs so we can get idea of the prickle sensation also from this st value this is surface thickness so it's the difference in thickness measured at two, two uh, different pressure information on hairiness or surface bulk is obtained. So, it is a surface bulk we can obtain a fabric may be soft at the surface and hard at the core. So, that area, that way we can get idea about this by measuring the surface thickness. Another term we can get it is called released surface thickness. Released surface thickness is uh, it is nothing but surface thickness after the fabric has exposed on steam or water which is used to simulate the actual wire condition. Now, release surface thickness is a, a, a parameter which will give us an idea about the presence of or permanence of a particular finish. Suppose, we have given one uh, calendaring finish calendaring finish and after one use okay after certain time if we get so if we, if we get the calendaring finish so that means the surface here surface is a stiff so we get a certain surface thickness st value before use so that value we get but after say one laundering or after one wash so this surface hairs has come up that all these hairs have come up and the surface thickness value will change so that change is, that is after treatment after washing treatment if we measure the surface thickness it will be surface release surface thickness if there is wide difference between st and str that means that the whatever finish has been applied it is not permanent it has been washed out so that str and st the difference value it gives an idea 
about the whether the finish applied is actually there it is a uh, permanent or it has been washed out. So, this uh, gives an idea and accordingly we will get the our tactile sensation. So, this is the surface thickness and uh, release surface thickness as we have discussed and try to see the principle it is uh, it is very simple this is the support here is a fabric this is the fabric sample and we know the fabric thickness and this is the pressure foot and this is a thickness gauge will give us an idea about the thickness and now at certain pressure as we have discussed so, this uh, these are the uh, pressure at 2 gram force per centimeter square and at 100 gram force per centimeter square. If we measure this uh, thickness, so this is the thickness difference. So, this is the this is the difference is surface roughness, surface thickness. Okay. Now, and if we wash it, wash the fabric, we may get higher surface thickness this is that is called release surface thickness. So, uh, from there from here we can get the idea about the thickness, idea about the hairs present at the surface and also idea about the whatever finishes we have applied the finish is actually working or not whether the whether the finish has been washed away that information also we can get by released surface thickness. Now, the next uh, module is uh, it is a uh, fast 2 which is uh, bending uh, meter. It is exactly similar as the Sarli bending tester and we will we get the similar characteristics here bending length and bending rigidity and uh, the measuring principle is exactly same as the Sarli bending tester. And, uh, fabric bending length it simulates the draping period. So, from the bending length value we get the idea about the draping behavior okay, and bending rigidity. So, this we can get and which is actually indirectly give idea about the stiffness of the fabric. So, stiffness, stiffness indirectly gives the idea about the tactile sensation. So, from B L value and the bending rigidity value we get indirectly the idea of the tactile sensation of the fabric. So, a very flexible fabric with low bending uh, rigidity may cause seam puckering. So, it actually in addition to the tactile sensation this uh, information this first instrument uh, measures the it gives the idea about the uh, suitability of the fabric. So, a fabric with a very low bending rigidity will may cause a, a seam puckering. So, while a fabric with high bending rigidity can be more manageable in sewing, so produce flat seam. So, that uh, way we can get idea about the performance of the fabric during sewing operation and the operator error in aligning the sample is eliminated with the use in um, optical sense. So, that um, operator error can be eliminated because in this instrument the alignment of the sample is uh, very important and optical sensor is used for uh, better alignment. So, this is the first system it is uh, exactly same as the uh, suddenly bending stiffness tester and here is the bending length. and which uh, 41.5 degree cells uh, 5 degree uh, angle it uh, as soon as it uh, measures this is this free length is the it is a bending length. Okay. And uh, first 3 is a it is a extension meter. So, this instrument gives idea about the tensile as well as shear rigidity. So, uh, this uh, it uh, gives idea about the extensibility it is not the tensile you can say it is only gives the extension 
extensibility of the beam because as a at a fixed load dead weight if we uh, if we actually it's a, if it hangs what is the extension it gives the only that idea it's not like cow water system where we actually load and unload and as well as it gives the shear rigidity value now it works in two different module so arrangement of fabric will be different for extensibility measurement and shear rigidity measurement it is capable of measuring the fabric extensibility in both warp and web direction and also bias direction. So, when it is working in bias direction that time it gives the shear rigidity and when it is working in warp and web direction it gives the extensibility of the fabric. So, extensibility is measured at three loads one is 0.5 gram 4 per centimeter it is called E 5 then 20 gram 4 per centimeter it is a E 20 and 100 gram 4 per centimeter it is a E 100. So, this actual extensibility is we can get at from uh, anywhere from 3 a E 10 E 100 is the extensibility of the building, but formability of the fabric formability of fabric we can get idea from E 5 and E 20. So, at lower level of extension uh, lower load at extension at lower uh, level of load which gives the idea about the formability we will discuss. So, fabric extensibility when it is combined with bending rigidity to calculate the formability. So, which is a measure of ability of fabric to absorb compression okay, on its own plane without buckling uh, that is called formability. So, uh, that means, with the uh, lower level of extension and bending if we know. So, fabric actually if anything any material if we if we compress if we if we buckle if we compress it will start buckling, but fabric actually takes little bit time so, depending on the bending rigidity and the extensibility it actually that uh, some during sewing operation during other uh, various other operation it has to absorb little bit compression actually longitudinal compression it is not uh, lateral compression no longitudinal compression before it starts uh, buckling. So, compress longitudinal the uh, compression on its own plane without buckling otherwise if it starts buckling from the beginning then it may create problem in the sew during sewing operation. So, formability is calculated from the difference between E 5 and E 20. So, these two parameters are used and E 100 is a measure of extensibility, but these three parameters we get from extension meter. So, simply we have to hang a constant weight and we get we have to note down the data extension, but the instrument automatically note down the data from its uh, software and it gets the data and it calculates uh, the formability value from the and in combination with the bending rigidity value. If the value is below approximately 2 percent that means, with this uh, E 100 then fabric will be difficult to extend during seam overfit. So, that extensibility we can get idea. This is the simple measurement technique. So, this before loading we know the distance uh, length and after loading you may be 5 may be 20 may be 100 we get the extension and automatically the software records the data okay. and from there we can calculate. Next is the shear measurement by same instrument first 3 in the extension measurement we have seen here the thread direction if we see the oven fabric it is a warp either warp or web direction this is either warp or web direction but in the shear measurement 
when you measure the shear rigidity the it is not aligned in the either warp or wave direction it is aligned in the biased direction and the extension it is called biased extension and this biased extension at a certain load is converted in terms of shear rigidity. So, this is the type of arrangement. So, before loading this is the fabric arrangement and after loading and this is the extension. So, lower shear force will give higher extension. So, from there simply by changing the fabric orientation we can get the idea about the shearing. It is nothing shearing is nothing but the movement of here uh, movement of yarns in its uh, interlacement zone. Okay. So, shear rigidity below 30 Newton per meter fabric deforms easily. So, that way and it gives uh, different types of problem laying up and sewing problem and if it is above 80 Newton per meter it it is a very stiff it is um, difficult during uh, sewing operation and there are uh, different even it will give idea about the tactile sensation. And next one is a it is a system which measures the relaxation shrinkage R s and hygral expansion it is a H e. What is hygral expansion? It is a after when we, fab we uh, fabric is in wet condition and after uh, drying what is the change change in uh, length dimension from there we can get the hygral expansion and uh, relaxation shrinkage relaxation shrinkage means it's after washing and all this after relaxing if you dry what is the actual dimension what is the shrinkage so relaxation shrinkage is uh, mainly due to the recovery of fabric structure which got strained during manufacturing. So, at a, at a certain um, it is a get after manufacturing it is strained after that it it uh, it is a relaxed and uh, uh, very high relaxation shrinkage results in problem of changing the size of the garment. So, it gives the different types of tactile sensation uh, if the fabric um, it is uh, highly relaxed then it will give pressure sense higher pressure sensation. So, this is a test method for measuring the relaxation shrinkage and hygral expansion and hygral expansion or contraction. So, it may be of two types. So, you depending on the fabric is caused by swelling or deswelling of hygroscopic fiber. So, basically the shrinkage is it takes place when we uh, uh, during um, uh, washing it is due to the swelling characters as we know. So, hygral expansion higher hygral expansion may result in seam puckering, fabric waviness, buckling and overall poor garment appearance. Okay. So, that will. So, uh, the testing is completed in following three steps. Okay. So, th we have to have uh, three steps in uh, step 1 fabric specimen is oven dried. First we have to oven dry the specimen up to 0 uh, percent moisture again to measure the dry dimension. So, dry dimension is say L 1 is the dry dimension then it is soaked in a water and uh, the wet relaxed dimension is L 2 and the fabric this then dried to measure it is the final dry dimension it is S 3 L 3. So, L 1, L 2, L 3 are the three dimensions and from there we can get the relaxation shrinkage is L 1 minus L 3 by L 1. This is the relaxation shrinkage and hygral expansion is L 2 minus L 3 by L 3. This is the hygral expansion we can uh, we can get uh, the idea about it. Now, try to see the total the steps in step 1 this is the fabric we are actually first oven drying the fabric. First we are oven drying the fabric 
and getting the dimension L 1 length or breadth whatever dimension you want warp wise or wave twice this is L 1. Then we are shocking the fabric this is the fabric we are shocking. So, ultimately we are getting uh, the length L 2 and after that we are re drying again this is the L 3. So, this difference this is due to the high gral expansion this is due to the this this increase in this uh, length higher length as compared to L 3 L 2 is as compared to L 3 is due to presence of water because all to all already the fabric has been relaxed here. So, that this difference is it is uh, with the reference to L 3 is known as the high gral expansion and uh, relaxation shrinkage is the from this to this once we are soaking and drying this total this gives the idea about the laundering effect. So, when we laundry uh, we uh, launder the fabric at uh, wash the fabric we first soak with uh, water and then dry. So, this uh, gives R s gives the relaxation stinker. So, depending on this value we can get idea about the performance of the fabric. So, the how to interpret this data which is very important in first first uh, system it is a very simple, but interpretation is very nice. So, here the all the modules are connected with the computer and computer automatically gets data from all the modules and uh, even including the the first four module we have to feed the data of the uh, relaxation shrinkage or high gral expansion. And finally, with this data it plots a, a curve which is known as the first control chart or first fingerprint and this is the chart uh, for a particular fabric for a, a fabric it gives a uh, separate chart and from this chart one can immediately get the idea about the fabric what will be its performance during application. So, which is unique to each particular fabric for a particular fabric it is unique each value has a separate scale showing in the graph I will show you the graph ok. Separate scale separate parameter they have got a separate scale representing the range of value in appropriate units. The it gives from say warp and wave direction. So, it gives the range of the values and uh, the total value minimum and maximum value it will give and also that uh, the uh, first chart is a it is a uh, fixed chart ok. So, it gives the range from minimum to maximum value and also it uh, it is a shaded zone is there shaded zone means it is a problematic zone within that zone if the fabric gives the uh, value that means we can uh, anticipate some problem in application. If the fingerprint falls into one of these zones okay, that is the the shaded zone okay, a potential problem with the particular aspect of fabric performance which is indicated. Okay. Now, now, let us see typical fast control chart this is the empty fast control chart. Now, here we can see these are the graphs these are the this is the blank okay, chart it is a lower value it is a higher value. Let us say relaxation and shrinkage R s 1 and R s 2 what does it mean R s 1 means it is a warp direction R s 2 say it is a wave direction ok. High gral expansion it is H e 1 H e 2 see R s 1 relaxation shrinkage if it is very low what will happen the problem may be may be fusing or pleating problem. So, that problem it may create if it is high that is 
sizing problem. It size if it is uh, relaxed uh, sinkage is high that means size may get changed. So, that type of problem will be there. High gral expansion if it is low there will not be any problem it is good. If it is high there will be pleating or seam puckering. So, that type of so, if, if our data falls in this zone. So, that means we can anticipate some potential problem of this fabric. So, we have to take action. Okay. Formability if it is high that is perfect okay, formability, but if it is low then formability problem will be there. Extensibility so formability f 1 f 2 warp direction wave direction extensibility E 100 1 it is a if it is low then there will be overfitting uh, overfit molding problem and if it is very high say if it is extends problem then there is a problem of check matching layup means uh, during uh, automatic cutting in garment industry the check matching will be problem because it, it uh, uh, large number of layers are uh, laid automatically and if the fabric is extensible that means, the check matching if it is checked fabric then there will be a problem. Okay. Then uh, bending rigidity, so if it is high there will be cutting problem and shear rigidity laying up problem, thickness, surface thickness. Okay real surface thing. So, this all this characteristics we so uh, this uh, thickness surface thickness uh, release surface thickness this there is no warp and wave. So, that is why it is a single line and this is a typical control chart. Now, what does it show this fabric? Fabric is tested in a fast testing a fast instrument and we get this control chart. That means, this fabric will have problem in sizing, sizing due to very high relaxation sinkage of warp direction. So, problem will be in the warp direction, wave direction we do not have any problem. So, we have to take action or whatever precaution we have to take we have to do okay. and say high gral expansion it is a perfect warp wise and wave twice high gral expansion is exactly same. Here warp wise and wave twice wide difference similarly we can uh, see this fabric will have problem with the say check matching problem at least in warp warp direction. So, it has got lower bending rigidity it has problem with this. So, this will give idea of potential problem which is going to have. So, we can take precaution. So, this is one fabric which is which is which pass which pass the first test. So, uh, this fabric you can very well use for any application, okay. but for uh, other fabrics uh, if there is any problem we can take either precaution um, or we can uh, some corrective measure we can always take okay and uh, we will stop here next we will start other principle which is fabric extraction principle okay thank you